Let's return to the National Assembly now, where the Senate is inviting the Minister of Transport, Rotimia Meiti, to appear before it over the alleged abandonment of the Port Harker to Meduguri Eastern Railway project. The Senate's decision to invite Mr. Meiti comes after Deputy Senate President Ike Kwerimadu expressed concern that the federal government appears to be dragging its feet on the Eastern Railway project after it secured the approval from Parliament for the loans for the rail project. Correspondent Linda Higbe reports. 61 out of 109 senators attend the first day of plenary for the week. It's a departure from the situation on November 13th, where only 20 senators attended plenary. The reason given was that committees were embarking on oversight visits to government agencies. At the resumption of legislative proceedings, the Deputy Senate President brings to the attention of his colleagues the matter of the eastern access of the federal government's railway projects. He's worried that the project is not being given adequate attention. We request that when we granted the permission for government to, uh, to raise loan from uh, China to develop the western axis running from Lagos to Kano, it was also in the understanding that once that approval is secured, the federal government will also engage with the Chinese authorities to also secure loan to deal with eastern axis running from Port Harcourt to uh, Medjugorje. Today, the story has changed. Now, what the Chinese authorities have been asked to do is to come and take over that axis and under a PPP arrangement and use their own money or monies to fix that uh, axis and then recover their money over time. And I believe that this is not fair to those of us who live in that part of Nigeria. The Senate Majority Leader presents a contrary opinion, but also raises a concern. The Eastern line or axis that was given to GE has not been abandoned. But my concern, and that should be the concern of every Easterner, that is from Port Harcourt to Meduguri, is that GE is designed to maintain the, the narrow gate. It's only rehabilitation and not modernization. The contractor, General Electric, recently pulled out of the concession deal, which they entered into with the federal government to maintain and operate narrow gauge rail lines across the country. The company says it would hand over to Transnet SOC Limited in line with its strategy to exit the transportation business. The Senate wants to understand the true picture concerning the railway projects, particularly the concerns raised over the Eastern Railway Line. It is inviting the Minister of Transport, Mr. Roti Miyamichi, to appear before the relevant committees to trash out these issues. Linda Kiwi, Channels Television News. Many thanks, Linda. Let's now rejoin IJ in our Lagos studio for more on the news at 10. Um, 420 billion, 633 million naira. That's the total amount the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso plans to spend on capital and recurrent expenditure in the 2019 fiscal year. Governor Amoso also promised to consolidate on his achievements in office in the last seven and a half years in 2019 to fully deliver on his mission to rebuild Ogun State. He was speaking during the presentation of the 2019 Appropriation Bill, tagged the Budget of Enduring Legacy to the State House of Assembly. Governor Bikina Amoso's arrival at the State House of Assembly complex signals the commencement of the presentation of the 2019 Appropriation Bill. Accompanied by members of the state executive, as the Speaker of the House sets All the right. ball rolling. Today, the issue of this administration, another giant strike is being made as the last annual budget of this administration on the mission to rebuild the state is being presented to the eighth legislation. Governor Mosun then takes to the lectern first for a quick review of his budget performance in the outgoing year. The 2019 budget has been appropriately titled budget of the Legacy to reflect our determination 
to deliver on our electoral promises to the optimal level. Even as our tenure racks up, we therefore propose a budget size of 402 billion, 630 billion, which represents an increase of 17 percent compared to the 2018 budget. With capital expenditure taking the largest share of 63.1% in the budget proposal, Senator Amoso explained that the budget of enduring legacy will also cater for the United Nations recommendation as regards allocation for the education sector. The component of the budget are summarized as follows. Salaries and allowances, 74.4 billion, representing 18.49%. Pensions and gratuity, 22.2 represent billion, representing 5.5. 51%. Our total personnel cost, 96.63 billion, representing 24% of the total budget. So our total recorded expenditure was 138 billion, 576 million, representing 36.90%. Our capital expenditure, we are still hungry for development. It's going to be 254 billion and 55 million, representing 63.1%. With the budget presentation over, what is left for Governor Mosto and the people of Ogun State is to await the passage of the appropriation bill and its onward ascent by the Governor before the commencement of the 2019 fiscal year. The President of the Nigeria Association of Petroleum Explorationists is worried about the fiscal regime of oil and gas in Nigeria, which he says does not support investment in exploration of oil. The NAPE president, who was speaking at the association's 36th annual international conference in Lagos, urged the legislative arm of government to quickly pass the Petroleum Industry and Governance Bill. It's the 36th conference and exhibition of the Nigeria Association of Petroleum Explorationists. And just before you think the story is not for you, listen to the critical role they play in our national economy. We continue to create the platform for sharing ideas and current realities as we profile possible solutions to today's economic challenges. Some focus on soil collaboration include growing Nigeria hydrocarbon reserve as well as with West Africa oil and gas through the exploration in the frontal basin and deep offshore locations. Liaise with government and key stakeholders in the industry to deploy new and integrated technologies for today's business. But while they are at it, their business and operating environment is faced by periodic spikes in price, which is the main discussion of this year's conference. This year's conference, which is titled Evolving Strategies for a Sustainable Petroleum Business in a Petroleum in a Fluctuating Oil Price Regime, aligns perfectly with the situation in the world energy profile and was strategically chosen to meet the challenges of fluctuation in oil price to meet energy needs. In order to attain this level, Nigeria needs to embrace an energy mix, which is uh, the theme of our pre-conference workshop yesterday, a combination of the various primary energy sources, including fossil fuels, nuclear energy, non-renewable waste, and other renewable energies, Dealing extensively on the winning strategy, the role of the private sector, and what policymakers do must align to grow the industry from a revenue rental agent to an economic growth enabler. Listen to the keynote speaker. As a country, as an economy, our aspiration beyond just increasing our oil and gas production, our aspiration should actually be to maximize our domestic energy consumption. That's what will expand the economy, not just receiving $25, $30 billion every year from oil revenues from abroad. That's not what will grow your economy. Highlights of the opening ceremony included recognition of outstanding contributions, good world messages, a tour of the exhibition hall, and a quick reminder of what must be done urgently for the sector. If people can go to Ghana, they can go to Ivory Coast, go to Zimbabwe, go to Namibia, and discover oil in an area that has not been proven, but here we have a prolific area. We are not exploring. Something is wrong. Regardless of what you say, the facts speak for itself. Unlocking Nigeria's oil and gas potentials, new methods, and emerging digitization landscape is the theme for 2019 conference. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Melinda Akinlami.
first. First Bank. Hey, thanks, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. Latest data from the National Bureau shows that the country's headline inflation fell to 11.26% year-on-year in October after two months of consecutive rise. The figure, which is different from an initial expectation of marginal increase by financial derivatives company and FSDH research, represents a 0.02% drop from 11.28% recorded in September. The food index fell to 13.28%, urban inflation lower to 11.64%, but the rural inflation was slightly higher at 10.93% last month. The country's inflation report comes at the same time the central bank's monetary policy committee begins its final meeting for the year, with the outcome expected to be announced by the CBN governor, Godwin Emifili, on Thursday. Following the federal government's recent flotation of $2.86 billion at the eurobond market, the country's debt sustainability has become a concern to the private sector. The chief economist of PricewaterhouseCoopers, Dr. Andrew Nevin, told the roundtable organized by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry his concerns on the arrangement of the debt level, population and economic growth. We collect 6% of our GDP in taxes. There's been a big push by Mr. Fowler of the NFIRS to increase that. We haven't quite seen the result as a percentage of it. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, but I think the fundamental reason is it's very difficult to take more out of the tax system if the economy's not growing. And so people are, they have, you know, they have their income, their income's stagnating, and then you're trying to take a higher percentage out at the same time. The only mathematics that works is the economy is growing. So the economy is growing at 6 to 8%. If your tax take can go up from 6%, 7% of the GDP. And then, of course, you've got a positive uh, reinforcing loop on that, right? There's more resources to do all the things that we need in terms of government infrastructure product, more resources in terms of education and health. But where we are right now is in a very difficult place. So I think the good news is um, the debt level is still low enough as we... As we know, down at 19%, or it's 18.68, I think, on your chart, but we rounded the numbers, so, so 19%. So we're still low enough to, to you know, fix our problems, um, but we're running out of time. Nigeria's stock market ends midweek trading session in the red as fresh round of profit-taking knockoff gains earlier recorded on Monday. Tosin Additional tells us more about the figures. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Investors at the domestic stock market resumed from the Muslim Eid holiday with renewed sell-off in some of the key bellwether equities. The profit-taking, which comes after moderate gains earlier recorded in Monday's session, hit the industrial goods and the banking sector and led to a 0.78% drop in the all-share index. Performance on the price table was negative, with losses recorded by 22 laggards, led by an 8.60% decline from Unity Bank. In contrast to 10 advances, led by a 10% increase from Double One, formerly known as Mobile. Meanwhile, overall volume of shares traded for Wednesday surged by nearly 90 million units from the previous session to over 237 million units, largely driven by the shares of Owendo. That's the Stock Market Report. I'm Tosi. Additional. Meanwhile, major stock markets across the United States and Europe have recovered from the Tuesday's big sell-off following a rebound in the tech, banking and auto shares. Here are some of the global market's closing figures for Wednesday. Business news is back to you, Joma. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Still ahead on the news at ten. 
Defending Africa Women's Champions, the Super Falcons of Nigeria, back on track at the Women's Africa Cup of Nations with an impressive win against the Cup Queens of Zambia. That's on sports. Just stay with us.